What's up, everybody? I'm the Zom Bunny, and welcome back to Major Minor. I'm joined once again by my lovely wife, Hoshi. Hi, everyone. So it's been five ever since we recorded this. Quite literally. Because <laughs> we recorded a very large section thinking we were at the end of the game. So we... As you all probably noticed when Zom Bunny was like, this is the end. No, this is the end. No, that's the end. No, this is the end. Well... No, never was. Maybe eventually? <laughs> yeah, so I've, I've stopped guessing whether or not we're at the end. I know we're close to it just by subject matter, but I have and no idea how far. And the massive amount of exposition, exposition dumping we're getting. Which, I'll address that in a retrospective in the very last video, where I may <laughs> do a separate retrospective video. Um, but where we left off, um, Nami attacked Valasquez, and he while killing himself on her sword, killed her. All of the energy they had was then sealed in her sword that's meant to hold on to that energy. And now our character has that sword and Nagi comes in the room and is like, well, I don't think you know how to use that sword, but here, I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> and then we faded to white and I'm guessing we're going to get some more exposition. Probably. So let's get moving. Onward! Yes, load the save file. Now loading, what? Oh, we're outside? We went outside? At an earlier time, and in a fit of panic, escapes from es escapees from the Wayfarer's Tavern hide in the forest. Fearing their lives, they fight to catch their breath. PB, you need to calm down right now. We did everything we could. It's a miracle that we survived. So Nami and Nagi didn't kill them. Yay! <laughs> Is Fidget okay? That's all I care about. I don't give a shit about PB. <laughs> don't you dare tell me to calm down. Did you not see the same thing I did? They killed my brother. Thanks to you. Aw, oh, Fidget's dead. God damn it. Reset. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't my fault, PB. You didn't see what those two could do. It would have been useless to contest them. Please think about this rationally. I'm upset more than I've ever been, but I didn't want to add to the body count. It was your job to protect us, though. You've been doing it for years, Ratty. You can't just back down from a fight. I am Baby. fucking this voice up. <laughs> well, it's because you're trying to sound excited when you've been making the character kind of, like, stagnant as a character. And like you can't, and you're having to like go off of what you're used to doing for them. Well, yeah, because they're usually very cynical. Be, yes, but you'd be very, you know, out of sorts. And right, he did just tell PB to calm down. Right. Well, I, I get it. PB, I know this is difficult for you, but we'd all be dead if we fought back. They have power like I've never seen. We need to be thankful we escaped. I hope Trish and Kaylin did too. But trust me, Fidget's not gone yet. They skewered him right in front of us. Oh, he's in the sword. Technically. I held him in my arms before we ran away. How can you say he's not gone? PB fumes with anger, but this time, it's justified. Remember what Rayo told us, PB. David has the ability to fix all of this. Right now, we need to focus on survival. This will all blow over soon enough. And we'll get to see everybody again. Not just fidget, but your mother, too. Do you really believe that, Ridey? Yes, with all my heart. I know that David can do this. You're lying. You said we need to focus on survival. But then you said death is irrelevant. Especially if David can reverse it. That's why I don't believe you. Why I think Fidget is really gone. You fear death. You don't want to die. Well, even if you realize that death can be reversed, you're still not going to want to do it. It hurts. <laughs> you don't truly believe in David. You don't truly believe in Rayo's words. There's a part of you that knows the truth. Righty clenches his fists, unsure of what to say. You're holding on to a false hope. Just like Fidget's been doing for years. I miss him, Righty. I miss him so much. And it's all your fault. PB leaps towards Righty, presumably to attack. But instead, he cries and hugs his friend. A fountain of tears run down his face. 
I want him back! Righty embraces PB and starts to cry as well, shedding his first tear since the Exodus Project. Achievement unlocked. Mama, I'm coming home. Oh, no! <laughs> I'm extra sad now! And it's a picture of Fidget. Oh. When I open my eyes, I'm confused by what I see. There's also a weird sensation in the back of my mind. For some reason, I think I see Righty and PB, but in front of me is actually a rusty hangar bay. I shake my head in an attempt to gain clarity. After a few moments, I notice Nagi approach me. Were Righty and PB in some sort of danger? If that was the case, I'm sure Nagi would know. I'm sorry for the mess, David. This room doesn't get much use. I promise the rest of the ship is clean. Rest of the ship? What does he mean? I'm so confused. This is my home. The Terminus. This is how they were jumping. Because ah. they, they managed to leave, obviously. They attacked the Federation, supposedly, which is outside of this plane of existence. Yeah. A flagship vessel built by the Federation. See? <laughs> Seized with my force. By Seized my with own. force. Seized by with my own force head. by my own hand. <laughs> Seized with my force, yes. <laughs> but please, follow me, David. This room doesn't befit our conversation. It's merely an organic landing pad. <laughs> organic landing pad? That sounds oddly lewd. Yes, it's able to transfer living beings, even if they are nowhere near the ship. As you can see, we don't get much company. <laughs> he laughs, clearly a jab at the dilapidated room. I understand, though, it's like getting beamed up. He must have transferred us both from Terra's surface. <laughs> Star Trek references! Yes. Hmm. I think you'll find this place beautiful. First impressions can be a damning thing. No shit, Sherlock. You must have thought I was ugly at first. Uh, I'm mostly still kind of do, dude. I'm uh, I'm mostly just having issue with how much of a deviant art reject you are. <laughs> a vampiric deviant art reject with a hint of steampunk. A little bit. Without even saying so, he starts to leave the room. I have no choice but to follow him with hesitation. I grip my new sword, ready to use it at any time. <laughs> Shut up. She's over there writing fanfic as we speak. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. Go on, go on. But when we exit, I see that it is truly that it truly is beautiful. Your Would you like sword. to save your game? <laughs> yes, my sword is beautiful. <laughs> Everything is pristine. It's glossy and white. Several computer monitors display incomprehensible data. This technology is so advanced I can barely grasp it. The Federation must be eons ahead of Earth and Terra. I stare in awe as I walk towards Nagi. He's walking fast and I don't want to get lost. I have to run to catch up as his stride is much longer. I'm taking you to the bridge. I thought it would be more fitting. No doubt you have lots of questions. I heard what father told you, but there's a lot more to it than that. Stories are rarely ever one-sided. Not wrong, but you did stab me. <laughs> we turn a few corners and I do my best to catch up. Nagi's demeanor is extremely different than I knew. I have some fright within me from our last meeting. A part of me fears that he might make a sudden move, and then I'll be stabbed again. But I don't blame you, Exodus. Wait. Is it okay if I call you that? I think it fits you better, to be honest. Father got to you first, it's a shame. Him and his people made a big impression. You're attached, and less open-minded. Dots. I have flashbacks to the first time I visited Terra. Righty got to Keela, and Dimian and Conrad got to me. And that time we sided with the opposite parties. I even thought about this correlation in my mind, but it couldn't be as simple as that. It implies there's no good or evil at play. Nagi attacked the Federation. He admitted this. And to top it all off, he tried to kill me. I have a reason for everything I've done. I'm sure you do. You sat through Father's story, Exodus. I hope you can do the same for mine. I guess so. We're almost at the bridge. I won't be much long. It won't be much longer now. We can end this without violence. 
Aha. We turn a few more corners and I see a large door. It's likely the entrance to the bridge of the ship. Nagi keeps walking and it opens upon his approach. I quickly enter after him, hoping it doesn't close. I knew one thing for sure. This is where it ended. You have reached the point of no return. Oh, we are literally at the ending. I win. <laughs> it only took you calling it, you know, six episodes ago that... We were close to the end. It was like, oh, we're going to end it. No. <laughs> but now we actually are. Look, the game's telling yep, me we you are. You no longer have the ability to save. Many scenes will start playing out in sequence. Ensure you have enough time to watch the finale. <sighs> this is going to take forever. Oh, well. Terminus Bridge. As soon as I enter, I see Nagi standing at a terminal. I don't know what he's doing, but he sure does. His fingers tap away at the touchscreen with expertise. After a moment, the windows seem to open. Actually, they fade into transparency. I'm welcome to the void of space. An absolute black. It's littered with less stars than I'd expect. It's kind of beautiful, isn't it? This is the edge of your reality plane. You can see outside, but that's it. You don't have the technology to escape, nor the ability to see this far. You're the first Earthling to witness this. All of those stars, just out of reach. They're the Federation's core worlds. But what you're seeing is only a memory. They're so far away, this isn't accurate. That light is millions of years old. We've long since destroyed those worlds. Honestly, I'm a little conflicted. From here, they look amazing. But you can see their flaws up close. If I could only see them like this, I never would have destroyed them. They'd still glisten like this today. But every candle dims into nothingness. And there is also beauty in the darkness. Alright, Breaking Benjamin, calm down. <laughs> Something that most people hate to admit. He rests his hand against the window and snickers. I guess he's overtaken by nostalgia at this sight, what the universe looked like before his onslaught. Then a moment later he turns to me and smiles. Creepy. I wish I could show you that darkness. Light is not as pure as people think. Those worlds shine with indecency. <clears throat> he takes a slow step towards me. I want to ready my blade, but I don't. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I sense sorrow and regret in his words. He wasn't going to attack me, I could tell. And then I get stabbed again. Mm -hmm. I hate thinking about the past. With his sword. Woman. <laughs> it stirs up rage within my soul. But you share the same rage as me. We were supposed to create a perfect world. But it wouldn't really be our world. It'd be handed over to the Federation. And what would happen to us after that? We'd likely get discarded, thrown away. We had no purpose other than to listen. At first we didn't know that. We happily made Earth to be perfect. We believed it as our will to do so. We, we believed it as our will to do it so. It was our will to do so. We believed it was our will to oh, do so. Oh, we believed so. it was our will. To okay, for some reason that was not clicking. <laughs> <coughs> Maybe it's the font. But free will did not exist for us. We were only doing what we were told to do. Even if we didn't know it at the time. We grew curious about our future. That is when we confronted Father. He told us the truth. About everything. We lashed out at him in a rage. We should have been free to live our lives. But instead he created us as slaves. He didn't deserve to live in peace. That is why we performed our ritual. We cursed the Earth with all manner of flaws. Death, disease, famine, you name it. He'd slowly watch his mission crumble. His scepter would be always out of reach. Nami and myself were able to break free, but we promised that one day we'd return. We'd kill him when his will was broken. That is when we embarked on our mission. We'd find the leader of the Federation, and we'd kill them breaking all shackles. They'd never be able to do this again. Condemn worlds to their servitude. The reality planes should have been free. The core worlds were the first thing we saw. They were in worse shape than we thought. Much more pathetic than Father led on. 
We touched down on one as soon as we could, but we were instantly greeted with violence. It was unfortunate, but we fought back. That's when we found out the truth. Our weapons were plagued as well, likely from the same ritual on Earth. As we killed them, we grew stronger. We could convert life into raw energy. Suddenly, our goal became more realistic. We began traversing all of these worlds, and we saw the Federation's true nature. They could barely sustain their own people. Their need for new energy was apparent, but none of the planes were successful. The Federation was living its final days. You might think that we're monsters, but our harvesting was a display of mercy. These people were suffering so much. We used their energy in a righteous manner, by destroying the Federation entirely. No more worlds would suffer because of them. As we harvested, we interrogated. We learned where the Federation was run, and about its leader, the Imperator. We knew where we had to go, the world that the Imperator called home. Only there could we end the Federation. But we saved it for last, Exodus. We wanted the Imperator to suffer too, much like Father would be at the same time. He'd see his Federation fall apart, and when he lost all hope, he'd die. Then the universe would be truly free. Meanwhile, in Metropolis, what? <laughs> Our journey finally led us to the home world. Don't we pray. were we were all powerful, completely invincible. Sure enough, this world was a paradise. They weren't suffering like other worlds. The Imperator obviously did this on purpose. Ensuring that he was able to live happily. But of course. We met with him and had a long talk. He stood by his morals to the very end. These experiments were for the greater good. He was civil, which was unexpected. His experiments led to so much suffering. He was the biggest mass murderer in history. Therefore, his end was very fitting. We killed him, but showed him no mercy. He was destroyed by his own experiments. We should have been satisfied, but we weren't. Was there something else we had to do? That's when we discovered the Terminus. The Federation knew what they were knew that they were dying, so they no longer sat around waiting. They built a ship capable of reality travel. They wanted to visit the reality planes rather than waiting for them to break free. We seized this ship without hesitation. That's when we realized what to do next. The Imperator was not the true creator. Something or someone made the Imperator. The Federation didn't spawn from nothing. This entire universe was likely created. But what would hold such power? We needed to continue our harvest. But now we could visit the reality planes. We were no longer limited to core worlds. The power we could gather was infinite. But we'd need every bit of it. We'd be breaking out of the universe. Reality planes were nothing to us anymore, and the Federation was insignificant. There was an even greater target out there. So we did what we'd been doing forever. We started harvesting the reality planes. Our power grew with each successful harvest. And yet your sister was killed by a spike to the chest? Me? What, like, what, what happened to that invincible part? That's when Terra piqued our interest. There seemed to be a massive power present. And not only that, it was rapidly growing. The temptation to harvest Terra was huge, but we decided to save it for last as well. We'd let the power grow as long as we could. And grow you did, Exodus. Nami and I harvested the universe, but somehow your power rivaled that. It would definitely be enough to break free. That's when we decided to come to Terra. Nami was driven by her lust to kill Father. And who was I to get in her way? She had a desire that was truly her own. She wasn't acting under any influence, so I let her do it, even if she died. Her final act would be her own choice. There's nothing more beautiful than that. I promised I would achieve our goal. That's why we destroyed the tavern. There'd be no need of it anymore. It was symbolic of Father's failure. His hopes to see a connected universe. We had fun raising it to the ground. And that brings us to where we stand. That was not as long-winded as I thought it might be. No. 
on the cusp of a universal revolution. I want to find the All-Creator, Exodus, even if I have to travel forever. Even if a million universes get in my way, I will find them and destroy them. I'll use their power to start over again. A new beginning for all of existence, without the suffering I've witnessed. That is what I truly was made to do. I wasn't meant to make a perfect world. I was meant to make universes of perfection. And you can help me, Exodus. Your power is vast and infinite. You don't need to follow Father's orders. His dream is less than ideal. His universe would be overpopulated. It would suffer in the exact same way. You'd have massive delusions of grandeur, dude. Yeah, a little bit. He'd have you undo all of my harvesting, bring back every world and every life. But that's not such a good thing. They'd live a horrifying existence, and some of those people were truly evil. The Imperator was living proof of that. Everything would be connected, sure, but would it truly be harmonious? I don't think that's the case. There are worse people than me out there. Father would give them free reign, all in the name of a connected universe. That's why we destroyed the tavern. There's another way to handle this. Something that works for us both. Lend me your energy, Exodus. I'll use it to leave this universe, but I'll close off Earth and Terra. Whatever I do won't affect you. These worlds will live just as they have but we'll destroy the Ark completely. The worlds will be independent. There will be no more give and take. Terra can become a world of its own. It won't be connected to Earth anymore, therefore no more immigration. This will solve all of Terra's problems. Death will be permanent. Terra will be free. It won't exist solely to hold energy. You can give the citizens true freedom. Achievement, Carry On, Wayward Son. Have you noticed they've all been song titles? Pretty much. This is so much to take in, I have to stop and think. Sonagi ended up destroying the entire Federation, but it was suffering, so he saw it as mercy? Now he wants to see who created this universe. The only way he can break out is with all of our power. The universe held in the blades and my energy. But he's offering to leave Earth and Terra unharmed, only if I can give up all of Valasquez's ideals. I've seen life on Terra, though. It's, it's not good. Is the rest of the universe truly that bad? Would I be releasing as much suffering as he said? It seems that now this is a battle of pure ideals. On one hand, I could guarantee Earth and Terra's safety. If we closed ourselves off, there'd be no risk at all. A connected universe was risky, but the reward, great. It would also give us an opportunity to advance. There's no way I could decide this on my own. And I'd have to defeat Nagi to connect the universe. Otherwise, we'd admit a, de a defeat of our own and hide. We'd live quietly, never knowing what we could have been. I can see Nagi tremble with unease. I think he expected me to give in to his speech. There are so many voices in my head, I can't. It's too unclear, too cloudy to pass judgment. I understand what's going on. The souls inside are conflicted once more. They don't know what action to take, right? I nod and tell him I'm sorry. I'd need lots of time to think about this. It doesn't need to come to that, Exodus. I have a better way to decide everything. A way to let our true selves decide. We're going to play Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> he turns his back to me and returns to the terminal. I see him typing away at it much harder than before. I sense that he's trying to hide some frustration. Did he really expect to convince me so easily? After a while, he turns back toward me. The ship starts to move, pushing me back violently. I almost fall down, but grab onto a terminal. As this happened, Nagi gives me an evil smirk. I've learned one thing during our harvests. People are most open before their death. It's when we put things in perspective. You can learn a lot about another person, especially with a blade to their neck. So tell me, what do you truly want? He flourishes his blade and holds it out towards me. I instinctively do the same in turn, facing him. The ship is moving, our destination unknown to me. Nagi keeps that evil grin on his face, ready to kill. Our destination is Terra. A crash course. 
In fact, we'll hit the castle directly. The fallout will obliterate everything. Let the blade speak of your resolve. If you can defeat me, then very well. You will make Father's dream a reality. But if you don't defeat me in time, we'll crash, and you'll die. Then I can use your power for myself. He lunges toward me and attempts to strike me down. I meet his sword halfway, locking both of us in place. I gaze into his eyes, and it seems we're of equal strength. The blades stay in deadlock, not choosing sides. But there's a part of me that wants to defeat him. As it detects this desire, the gear on my blade spins. It gives me extra strength, and I finally overpower him. But he dodges with ease, moving to the side. After a moment, he attacks once more, full force. I brace myself and hold out my blade in defense. When our swords clash, a white light flashes before us. Likely, this is a reaction to my spinning gear. Oh no. The energy is escaping. These blades were not meant to clash. Exodus, tame your gear immediately! I don't listen to him, and I attack again. I needed this boost if I wanted to win. A white light flashes as they clash, an clash another time. But when it fades, I notice new stars glistening. A celestial light show being... A celestial light show being born from the blade. Worlds long since harvested finding new life. Don't be foolish. You'll undo all of our work. Then neither of us can achieve anything. He starts to take a defensive stance. He was afraid of our sword connecting further. He dodges my attacks smoothly and with ease. I never thought such a man would display grace. <laughs> a part of me wants to stop the gear, but I don't. Now that I've tasted its power, it's all I need. Perhaps this is what Nagi felt, as he used it as well. He continues to evade, so I'll need to switch things up. Flames start to engulf the windows of the bridge. We must be breaking into Terran atmosphere. The ship shakes. I could use the turbulence. Perhaps I'll be able to throw him off guard. Only a few minutes left, Exodus. I can dodge whatever you throw at me. There's no way you can win anymore! His baiting words. And Works. I attack... His baiting works, and I attack full force. But this time I do my best to trick him. In the middle of a slash, I lose my balance. He thinks the shaking of the ship overtook me. But he was the one who got caught off guard. He tries using my momentary confusion to attack me. But like he did before, I dodge him with ease. I turn around and drive the sword through his back. Processing. <laughs> Processing. Awkward silence. Yep. He lets out a grunt and falls to his knees. He remains there, panting heavily. The floor fills with his blood, pitch black. He bows his head down as if admitting defeat. I take a few steps back, my blade left inside of him. The puddle of blood on the floor grows in size. I watch on in awe, expecting him to pass out. Congratulations, Exodus. You've done it. You've proven how stupid you really are. <laughs>